Alright, everything is wired to power except for one thing I forgot to mention, which was which is the docking hatch. It does require power as well. So I'll grab it off this junction box. And then it's just the item in the background there. Right there. And then I'll straighten out that wire. Uh, the only other thing I did that I didn't mention was I put each ballast pump on a different junction box so that one junction box breaking doesn't uh, ruin the ship's entire ability to control ascent and descent just as a uh, sort of precaution. So the other, th the other thing that has to be done with the ballast pumps is they have to be wired to the navigation terminal and so the wiring that needs done there is the set target level option with the um, pumps uh, wiring interface. So I'll create some cable holders coming up to the status monitor. Drag that back down. And we'll overlap the textures there. All right. So starting with this far left one, when you wire it, grabbing the set target level option at the bottom and it's going to come up here to velocity y out and then just bring that down through the cable holders so that has to be done with each ballast uh, the other thing with the ballast is if you want AI characters to be able to play on the ship they need to know that these are the ballast pumps so if you select the pump and then under tags add comma ballast that'll tell the AI what these pumps specifically are for and that will allow them to uh, be able to properly take orders from the captain when it comes to repairs and that sort of thing. So the other thing with power that we have to worry about is uh, pumps. So we've got an airlock here we need to have some form of pump to drain the water whenever people come back in. Anything that's on the bottom of the ship uh, needs... Water will be draining down to it, so it needs some form of pump. So we need one here, we need one in the med bay, and we need one in this gunnery compartment. So I have a... Pre they have a prefab, automatic bilge, and I'll just show you the wiring there. So all it is is it's a little wa water detector that they scaled down the texture on. Whenever you select uh, an item, you can see one of the first options here is scale, and that'll let you scale the texture down to a smaller size. And it just has two signal out. Uh, whenever the water detector picks up water, it'll send out a one. When, it's a, when it, there is no water, it sends out a zero. So it sends to the pump's set state, which will turn it on and off, and it goes to a signal check component. The signal check just takes a signal in from the water detector and sends it out, sends it out to the pump speed. So what that means is this is going to detect, detect the strength of the signal. So if there's more water that the detector is seeing, it's going to ramp up the speed on the pump to get rid of it faster. And then as the water level starts to drop, it'll slow down the pump so that it's not consuming as much power. And then the pump takes a power in. So that'll have to be wired to one of the junction boxes. So if we grab this whole system, we need one here, drop it down a little bit. We need another one in our airlock, and one in the med bay, and then one here at the base of this ladder. Okay, so the way we're going to get water to actually drain down to these areas is using duct blocks. So there is no built-in prefab for it, so I made one. All this is, is we've got a platform here. We have a duct block and a water detector. The water detector, the outputs are the same as before. All it does is it sends a signal out to the set state of the duct block. So if there's water, the duct will open and allow water to come through. If there's no water, it closes and it won't let anything through. Put that back together. So the way you use these is if we want water to drain down from the engine room into the med bay to be collected by this bilge pump, we'll drag this over and make a hole. 
place this along the wall, bring in another wall, put it on the other side, and drag it into place. And that's it. And these don't require any power. So in order to have water drain, we need one here, coming down to here, where it'll drain down there. We need one up here, here and here, draining into the reactor room, which can drain into this ballast and to this bilge. We need one for the armory to drain into the ballast. We need one for cargo to drain, probably into the armory. And then command and control can drain down into the gunnery here, which can drain to the ballast and down to this bilge. So that's all just placing the duct blocks to allow the flow, and you can see the gap is automatically created. And with that, I'll go ahead and finish that off with this ship and then come back. All right, so the junction boxes are all wired. Each one has a connection to the previous one in the circle and the next one. And then this one sends uh, power out to our two supercapacitors, which just have power in so far from those two. Each of these boxes, the reactor, the engine, the supercapacitors, you can play around with their uh, settings. So they have a max output, a max capacity, the charge that they start with when the, when the round starts. So if I shift this over to 20, you can see the green bar fills up on the capacitor. That means that when the round starts, it'll have a full charge. You've got your recharge speeds, uh, what it's currently set to, the maximum it can be set to, and the minimum voltage it needs to run. Then each junction box has the overload voltage, the fire probability if there is an overload, the minimum voltage to run, its power consumption, and if you scroll down further, you can find its deterioration delay, how long it takes for it to break and require repairs. Batteries, similar to superconductors, have charges and capacities. The engine has the max force it can put out, the minimum voltage to power it, and its power consumption. And then the reactor has output settings, meltdown delays, that sort of thing. Uh, so you can play around with all that to kind of tweak the electrical systems for what you specifically want out of that submarine. Alright, so we've got a couple of systems we need to wire up. First and foremost, I'm going to do the engine. And to hide the wiring here, I'm just going to send it into the wall. So I'll drag a cable holder coming out to the engine. We'll power it here. And we've still got a slot on the power that comes directly from the reactor, so we'll put that there. If we select the wire, we can drag a node, I'll uh, hide the walls. I've already got a vertical uh, cable holder coming up through here. So we'll drag that node, set it straight, and then move this node so that it moves through the holder. And then we can see it uh, looks better. All right, so we'll grab a couple of vertical holders here to wire up uh, the deconstructor and the fabricator. And I'll just have this come over to there. So we'll grab a wire off of this one for the deconstructor and the last slot on this one we'll use for the fabricator. And then again control click to set a node. Straighten out the wire, bring it over to this holder and then straighten it out. And just like that, you have powered the systems and straightened out the wires. So that has to be done for every power-consuming system on the ship, including the medical fabricator, all of the ballast pumps, the oxygen generator, these two terminals. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and wire the rest of those up. It's all done the same way as the deconstructor and the fabricator, so I will come back whenever that's done. Alright, now that everything is wired up, we're going to place vents for the oxygen generator. Every room needs one to be able to dispense oxygen, including the room with the generator. So place them wherever. The placement doesn't matter. There's not going to be anything physical connecting to them. So I just tuck them out of the way, usually. I wouldn't worry about it in the ballasts. So we'll... Place one there. 
over here by the diving lockers, cargo bay, command room, gunnery one, gunnery two, and armory. All right, so now each one needs to be linked to the oxygen generator. So if we click on it, hold down space, and then click on event, if we make links visible in the left tab, we'll see a green line going to it. So we need to do that with every vent we just placed. Alright, I think that's all of them. Okay, so the next thing will be getting the guns placed. So we have this set up to do four coil guns and a rail gun. So I'll put coil gun there, one there, one, one down here, and one down there. And so these we're going to do control M to flip them. And then you can see there's a center green line here that determines which way it's facing. So for that, we need to set the max at negative 180, or I'm sorry, the max at zero, and the min at negative 180. There we go. Uh, dragging the boxes can be a bit finicky. So if we just go into the settings for the coil gun and scroll down a little bit, we can see the rotation limits. So we'll set the x to negative 180. I'm sorry, we want the x at 0 and the y at 180. And now we have an upside down coil gun. So we'll do the same thing over here. Flip it with control M. Clip it into the ship a little bit. And then 180, 0. There's our coil gun. And these ones are already fine. And then we'll place the railgun on the bottom. So we'll grab a railgun, control M to flip him, clip him in a little bit, and use space to modify that. And then 0, 180. And there's the guns. So the guns need to link to their loaders. So the rail gun, hold down space and link it to its loader. And then you link up the coil guns. So we'll have this one do bottom front, top front, top back, and bottom back. All right, so that's everything linked. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide the links. Now we need to wire these up. So to wire up a gun, you go back into wiring mode, and it's power in has to come from a supercapacitor. And the way I the way I would do it with this ship, because the rail gun uses a lot, is I would do three coil guns to that top one, and then the last coil gun and the rail gun to that bottom supercapacitor. And then its signals for position out and trigger in come from whatever uh, periscope is controlling it. So this one is set to this loader, so this periscope will control it. So position out on this goes to the position in on the coil gun, and trigger out on this goes to trigger in on the coil gun. And it's the same exact process for the rail gun with its periscope, and each one needs to be wired up that way. For the uh, periscopes here, for the captain, we can use a spotlight, or a searchlight, sorry. We can place one at the front and one at the bottom here. Again, control M to flip it. I'll line it up like that. Then we can modify these values. Oh, it's a little different on this one. Oh, I'm sorry. It was 0 and 180. There we go. We can tweak that a little bit because it's on a bit of an incline there, so maybe we'll do 170 and negative 20. 
negative 10. There we go. And these green lines represent the limits of where it can move. So the searchlight can go from here to there. And so we'll leave that like that. And then for the searchlights there in the same boat, they get a power and then a position in from the periscope. And you can set the trigger out on the periscope to toggle state. And then you'll be able to turn the light, the searchlight on and off by clicking in the periscope view. So I'm going to go ahead and finish wiring the other guns and the searchlights, and then I'll be back. All right, so each of the guns and the uh, searchlights have been wired. So uh, I meant to flip this. Uh, I guess the texture is just not loading properly. So sometimes these uh, these textures don't load perfectly right. So you can hit reload sprite. Uh, and then the next time you start up the round, it should reload the sprites that it displays properly. But that's going to reload both searchlights. Then we can modify the bounds on this one, I suppose. Set the x to uh, 90. So 170 and 0. Sometimes it doesn't update right until you actually click off and check it again. So we'll set that to 10. All right, that's pretty good. OK, so now we want to load each of these coil guns and the rail gun. So the way we do that is we go ahead and grab coil gun ammunition. We need four of them. And then we've got four different racks of three, so we're going to need another 12. And then unfortunately it's a little tedious, you go into character mode, grab the box, and then drag it into the loader. And you have to do that with every single shelf, every single ammunition loader. And then it's the same thing for the railgun, where you grab the shells, five go into the loader, and then three per shelf. So those all have to be loaded in. And then while we're here, we can go ahead and load a fuel rod into the reactor and three extras into the cabinet. And again, just character mode, drag it where you want it. <laughs> 